We are joined now by Bob Stewart from the Lanarkshire Family History Society and he is going to tell us about a bit about the society and the hard work that they've been doing for many years. So can we start off, could you tell us a little bit about the society, where are you based, um, you know, in the history of the society? Yeah, we started as the Hamilton and District uh, Family History Society meeting in Hamilton Reference Library. Uh -huh. But as the society grew, they outgrew the space available and made various moves, eventually moving into our own premises. Uh, and we've had to move that twice. And we're now in our current uh, premises in Mary Street, uh, which is a, a good facility. I think we'll be here for a while, hopefully. <laughs> That's good. And um, so, the, so Lanarkshire, we've got a lot of people joining us today from um, outside Scotland. So whereabouts is Lanarkshire in Scotland? Well, really in what would be called the central belt between Glasgow and Edinburgh. Uh, and we stretch, it's quite a long uh, county. The modern terms is North Lanarkshire and South Lanarkshire, but we cover both uh, and 37 parishes and all. So. A lot big area to cover. I, th I think okay. it's uh, I think it's possibly about the, the most densely populated uh, part of Scotland. But at the same time, the south side uh, is very hilly and mountainous and countryside. A good mix. Yeah, yeah it's quite it's quite a diverse county, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So a lot of people uh, might have ancestors who either were from Lanarkshire or even passed through Lanarkshire. Um, so like a lot of family history societies, you've got different projects on the go. So can you tell us a little bit about the projects that you've got going well, on? Most of the projects uh, are to do with the graveyard uh, transcriptions. Uh, with a small team, Unfortunately, a few of them passed away in the last few years, but we've still got a good wee core membership there that are recording this, the cemeteries. And they, they still do it old school, uh, going out with a clipboard and transcribe all the wording on the stone, not just the names and dates. They, they put everything in the, the small booklets we eventually produce. Uh -huh. uh, the other big area is the military, the fallen mainly of the First World War. Again, we have a good team of members who I just want to make sure all Lanarkshire or all men who had a connection to Lanarkshire are not forgotten. Yeah. And those graveyard booklets are always so helpful because they can contain, you, 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 for example, you get families that are grouped together on a stone, so that can yes. be a big um, help. Um, and also for any that are before 1855 as well, when death records are so hard to find, um, they can be really, really useful. If I bring up um, the website and show everybody the website, this is the website of yes. the Lanarkshire yes. Family History Society. So what do you have um, on here then? Uh, well, the, it is needing updated. Uh, I'm not denying that. Uh, but all the all the kind of names, email or contact addresses, all the membership information is current uh, mm -hmm. and accurate. If people want to get in touch with us, go to the website under a uh, about L N L F H S. Uh, there's a contact, uh, and all the email contacts is there, and they will all get responded to. Uh huh. Excellent, that's really useful. The one area that's really letting us down is the publications. Mm -hmm. uh, that has not been updated for quite a few years for various reasons. But again, if people have a, want to see what we've currently got, if they send an email to publications email address, we can send them a, an email with the current uh, complete list. Okay, so that's handy to know. So you, have you got publications then that are available but not available on the website? On the website. Right. Uh, in all, I, th I think uh, currently we have about 250 booklets we do. Mm -hmm. uh, well, one thing that's not mentioned at all on the website is the school books. We've got some school books which are uh, admission registers. Some yeah. are just log books. 
uh, uh, it's, uh, it's amazing the information you get from a logbook even. It maybe doesn't give you the names of the children, but if, if it's, uh, the, let's say, the Glassford Public School, you'll find that in a particular couple of weeks, there were a lot of children not attending school because of scarlet fever. Uh-huh. So that can be a good clue uh, for when children disappear off sentences, or off the census records. Uh, did they maybe die from uh, that epidemic? Uh-huh. Uh, it's amazing what you can find. Yeah, that sounds really good. Do you have one of those there? Do you have one in the archive? In this new, new Lanark uh, uh-huh. Public School, 1886 to 1906. And it is a complete list. I don't know if you can see that okay there. I mean, it's giving the, the, the surname of the child, four names, the parents' names, some occasion, brief, brief addresses. When they were enrolled in the school, a lot of them tells you when they left the school. Okay. And if the, maybe, if the family maybe moved from uh, New Lanark to Douglas, it maybe says gone to Douglas School. So again, it's telling where the family has possibly moved to. Yeah, that could be really helpful. That could be great. Well, with this, if you've got the list, um, would we be able to put that into the Facebook group, um, the SAFs group? Yes, I can get yeah. that. And then yeah, people can get, can that, get that, that in the yeah. document section uh-huh. uh, to get a, an up-to-date list of, of what's mm-hmm. available. That's uh-huh. great. Excellent. Sounds like everybody's been very busy. Um, so what other um, publications do you do you have then? You've got the school logbooks, the MIs. Um, and the, the fallen of different parishes. Yeah. Uh, they're still working on them. Yeah. And again, they're... It's not just the name of the the, the soldier, sailor, airman, uh, and when he died and which cemetery is buried in in Britain or overseas. And maybe a lot of them, we found information about his parents or who he was married to and any children that were in the family. Uh, so there's a lot of family information as well as those that fell. And a few of them... Uh, the guys have gone far enough that they're not just covered the men that fell. They managed to source information for a lot of men that did survive the war uh-huh. and maybe eventually died in 1944 or something, uh-huh. you know, just from old age or something. Uh-huh. That, uh, there, there's a lot of valid information in them. That's really good. Who can get involved in these projects? If somebody is interested in helping out, are they able to volunteer to... Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Like all societies, we have a lot of good members, but mm-hmm. some uh, are maybe not in, into using computers or doing particular types of research. But uh, if, if somebody, particularly in that area of military, uh, yeah. if they want to get involved, they're certainly not going to stop them <laughs> helping us. Excellent. At the end of the day, it's not for us. It's preserving the history of these men. Yeah, and that's the great thing about Family History Society. When you volunteer your time to help, it's it's preserving the history for everybody as well, and everybody then can, can access it. Yeah. So we see you're sitting in the um, lovely research centre that you have. So yeah. obviously, at the moment, presumably, you're still close to the public. Um, yes. In, in normal times when people can visit, what facilities do you have? I see a large reference library there. Well, we're, we're sitting in the reference library, which, as you can see, I think it's now about 1,800 uh, mm-hmm. books we've got in it. Uh, so you know, it, is, it is quite a setup. Uh, next door, behind the monitor just now, is another room which has six PCs, mm-hmm. all on broadband. Uh, and we've got oh, the, <laughs> one of the reasons our ladies were happy when we moved to this centre is we've got a separate gents' toilet. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so we've, we've good facilities. We have a, a small uh, kitchen. Coffee's always in the go. Uh, <laughs> normally, we're open. The, the t- dates and time, days and times is on the website, uh, mm-hmm. but obviously closed just now. Yeah. And hopefully, once we get open, we'll get back to the normal. Uh, 
we'll just be going through the process in the next few weeks, I would think, uh, yeah. getting yeah. the volunteers back on board that are happy to come out again. Mm -hmm. They're, they're yeah. missing the members. Yeah, it seems like you've got quite a big room as well, so that should be... That should yes, be oh yes, aye. I mean, That's normally, true. where am I actually sitting just now, there's normally two large tables here uh -huh. uh, where we have our committee meetings, and I can seat 14 people down both sides. So it's, it's a big room. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, a good, good space. Excellent. So if anybody, um, certainly anybody local, anybody uh, in Scotland would be able to visit, but even if they're coming from further afield, uh, if you, somebody is visiting from America, would you recommend that they get in touch first, maybe? Oh, yes. Them? Yeah. I mean, we can. Quite often when people come from Americas or Australia, they're over building a visit to do research into a family holiday. Uh -huh. And they want to come on a particular day. So we quite often, if we, we are pre-warned, uh, if they get in touch, uh, we can arrange to be open the day that suits them during their holiday trip. Yeah. But just while we're, we're talking about the library there, I lifted one book out just to show you. It's not just Lan Lanarkshire we cover, we cover. I don't know if you can read that title there. Oh, wow. Census of New South Wales, November 1828. Yes, 500, 500 pages of it. There you go. So, so you, just just to prove that it's not just Lanarkshire. Not just Lanarkshire. So, do you have do you have micro do you have microfilms at all? Microfilms? We've got microfilm. Uh, all the all the 1901, 1891, all the year census. We've got the microfilm for the whole of Lanarkshire, mm -hmm. and do some OPRs before that. So, mm -hmm. if people wanted to go back and check microfilm. We've got that there. Yeah. yeah. And that, that, that can be a, if you're trying not to spend too many Scotland's people credits, yes. uh, it can be a good way of doing it. Use the index and then look it up. Um, it's also useful because that way you can more easily page through a whole parish. So depending on the project, yes. you're in, yes. it can still be much, although you can page through, it certainly mounts up on Scotland's people. So yeah. <laughs> nice if, you're, if you've got access to that, that's great. So if somebody wants to join up, become a member of the society, how much does that cost? Well, uh, possibly one of the cheapest in Scotland. <laughs> we do charge, if they want the paper journals, for, which goes out to the members three times a year, for overseas members, it's £16 a year. Mm -hmm. If they stay in the UK, it's £12 a year. But if they want to receive the journals as email PDF attachments, it's £10 a year, worldwide membership for a full year. You can't <laughs> be, <the> centre. <laughs> I think that would be pretty hard to beat. So you've got, for your £10, you get the use of the centre, which we've just yes. talked about there, all the, the reference and things. And also you've got other volunteers who are on hand as well, I imagine, to help That's you out right, as yes, well. Yes, yes. Um, you also get, so you get your journal three times a year. And if you're not, able to visit in person do you have volunteers who are able to help members out with research as well oh yes that, that is on the website under the contact us there's a research email address send the message there and john will get out of bed and go and do research right away for you <laughs> you know you know what these you know what these volunteers are like they're just looking for a challenge <laughs> Everybody likes, everybody likes a puzzle. That's, I think, yes. what we all like, isn't it? Especially mm -hmm. when we can solve it. So there's lots of benefits to membership then. Are there any other benefits of membership? Yeah, one thing we started a few years ago was monthly e-news, going out by email to everybody that gives us an email address, uh, listing events that were going to be happening in the next few weeks or months, not just here in Lanarkshire, but throughout the UK and overseas, uh, where various members would get in touch with us to say there's such and such happening in British Columbia, and we put that in, or th that event. So the, that, as I say, it started a few years ago, but in the last year, we've been putting them out every two, three weeks, uh, as much as we could, uh, just to keep contact with members during the, the lockdowns. And they're being well received. That's really good. 
And yeah. we included things like, obviously, Scottish Index conferences, uh, any other things that people were doing. Yeah, that was great. And of course, this this last year has changed everything because normally yes. you, I think either every year or every other year, you have a large in-person family history show, which is which is a great one. We always like to attend. Um, they've obviously, nothing like that can happen at the moment. Um, so have you been doing anything online? Uh, we've, we've had, just started in the last few months, we've had a few uh, talks on, uh, one was by somebody you possibly know, Christine Woodcock yes. in Canada. she done yeah. one on Canadian research. Yeah. We've had a few others on how to use Facebook, for example. Yeah. Uh, anybody that's maybe not used Facebook, Claire talked them through how to open a Facebook account and the great value there that's there for uh, genealogy groups. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're, we're getting into it now. We've won again next week, and that's on a member who uh, found an old money box in the house and turned out it was a lot of family heirlooms uh, documents, which didn't add dates and names to his family tree, but gave a lot of hints and tips about their lifestyle. Uh, maybe things like uh, an old pay slip that proved that man had worked as a miner. You know, there are different things like that. Yeah. Oh, that sounds really good. Sounds very interesting. Great. So definitely, if you your ancestors, um, ten pounds a year. You can't you can't say fairer than that. And um, well, what we'll do is we'll make sure that we put um, a link into the the chat. Um, on Zoom or into the Facebook group as well, so that people can go and have a look at, at your website. Um, and those who wish obviously can um, can become a member and, and take advantage of all of this. But thank you so much for joining us today. Um, that was really kind of you. It was a pleasure. Thank Thoroughly you. enjoyed it. <laughs>